Good morning. I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me to speak with you today about some lessons that we've learned about vaccination against SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19. My name is Jeffrey Silverswag. I'm a professor of clinical medicine at Weill Cornell Medical College and the chief medical officer of the Rogerson Institute, both located in New York City. I'd like to thank my colleague, Dr. Alan Kleiger from Yale University for his review of these slides. Dr. Kleiger and I together co-chaired the American Society of Nephrology's COVID-19 response team. His role was later assumed by Liz McNamara from Northwest Kidney Centers. She and I together continue to lead the Nephrologist Transforming Dialysis Safety's COVID-19 and Other Emerging Threats Workgroup. I also chair the American Society of Nephrology's Emergency Partnership Initiative. With that introduction, there have been numerous barriers and facilitators of vaccination against SARS-CoV-2. First, to give you a scope of the, of the problem in patients with kidney disease, COVID-19 caused disproportionate morbidity and mortality in patients with end-stage kidney disease. In fact, for the first time in the 50-year history of the Medicare ESRD program, as you can see from this slide taken from the 2023 USRDS annual data report, the population of patients with end-stage kidney disease in the Medicare ESRD program decreased. Importantly, outcomes were worse in historically underserved communities. As you can see in this figure, also taken from the 2023 USRDS report, the numbers, the declines were more noticeable in those who self-identified as Black, Hispanic, Native American, Black, Hispanic, and Native American compared to Asians and whites. When vaccines became available in December of 2020, there were equity issues in terms of vaccine distribution. As everyone remembers, the supply of vaccines was limited and priorities was given, priority was given to those residing in group homes and those with underlying conditions that placed them at increased risk of poor outcomes. Notably, kidney patients were excluded from that priority group. Patients living in better resource communities had better access to vaccines in the community. They had more resources to schedule appointments and more support Vaccination sites tended to be close to their homes, and for those who had to travel, they had more resources to travel for vaccination. In March of 2020, 2021, the American Society of Nephrology partnered with dialysis providers and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention to arrange for a federal distribution of vaccines to dialysis providers through a network administrator model. We pooled data from almost 500,000 patients with end-stage kidney disease across the US. And notably, underserved communities had the biggest increase in vaccination. As you can see here, vaccines became available through this network administrator model in March of 2021, and the proportion of patients vaccinated increased sharply. Over time, the differences between minority groups and whites narrowed dramatically. You can see early on that Hispanics had a notable rise and over time that Blacks uh, had a notable rise as well. And again, these are self-identified groups. But there are ongoing challenges with vaccination. One of the biggest challenges that we have faced throughout the pandemic has been documentation of infection. As everyone knows, early in the pandemic, testing was not widely available. Some patients with milder upper respiratory symptoms were simply not tested for COVID-19 as a result. Some patients who tested positive outside of dialysis facilities didn't provide that information, so isolation was not available. Mandatory reporting of positive tests ended with the end of the public health emergency on May 11th, 2023. Since testing will no longer be paid for by the federal government, it may not be as readily available uh, to patients with suspected COVID-19. In terms of documentation of vaccination, most vaccines are now administered outside of dialysis facilities. And not all states have readily accessible vaccine registries. If patients don't always report vaccination to their providers, it's hard to know who's been vaccinated and who hasn't. In terms of best practices for vaccinating patients, patient comfort is critical. Patients need easy access to vaccines, 
and patients need to be able to rely on staff that they know to ensure their safety. Patients also need education regarding the safety and efficacies of vaccines. Printed materials and recorded videos are helpful, but hands-on encounters with physicians and nursing staff are better. Importantly, direct encounters with patients who receive vaccines are invaluable, but these educators need to be taught HIPAA regulations and they need to be guided as to the right time and place for that education. Vaccine acceptance of influenza has been much greater than that of COVID-19. Dialysis facilities have consistently vaccinated more than 70% of their patients against influenza. As you can see from this slide taken again from the USRDS annual data report published in 2023, the proportion of pa patients on dialysis vaccinated against influenza is more than 75%. However, in this paper taken from Dr. Priti Patel's group and, and her colleagues, published in JAMA in 2022, you can see that less than 65% of patients receiving dialysis in the US received at least one dose of COVID-19 vaccine. Clearly a big difference there. Well, then the question becomes, why are the vaccination rates against influenza so much higher? Politics clearly plays into it. There's little controversy regarding the benefits of influenza vaccination. However, many there are many COVID-19 anti-vaxxers for some individuals, the risk-benefit ratio of vaccination is, let, is unclear. And some become concerned because of, of rumors that they've heard that mRNA technology used to produce the COVID-19 vaccines could interfere with their DNA or could introduce other foreign materials. COVID-19 vaccination rates in dialysis facilities have been seen to correlate with the rates in local communities. So in those communities where vaccination rates are lower, vaccination rates of patients receiving dialysis are also lower. There are also some misconceptions that play into lower rates of COVID-19 vaccination. Some people believe that they're immune after infection. And while there is immunity after infection, it wanes relatively quickly compared to the immunity provided by vaccines. Some also believe that because the newer strains are less severe, cause less severe illness and less mortality, that they don't need to be vaccinated. Importantly, vaccine trials excluded patients with advanced CKD and those receiving immunosuppressive medications, including patients with kidney transplants. That led to uncertainties regarding the vaccine safety and efficacy in these populations, as well as uncertainty regarding vaccine dosing for patients with kidney disease. In addition, the vaccines received emergency use authorization from the FDA. Approvals outside of the typical v FDA pathways led to concerns about the experimental nature of vaccines against COVID-19, as well as the vaccine technology. There was also concern that the rapid approvals that were granted to vaccines against SARS-CoV-2 might miss safety signals. In addition, underserved populations had concerns about experimentation, which were related at least in part to historical mis mistreatment including the Tuskegee, the Tuskegee syphilis study. Addressing these misconceptions requires education. Respected government sources must provide consistent information as has not always been the case throughout the pandemic. Providers must educate their patients and patient groups must educate their members. The safety of vaccines against SARS-CoV-2 is now established in large numbers of patients from all walks of life with all sorts of underlying conditions. And again, the excess morbidity and mortality in kidney patients is clear. Again, we need to make it easy if we're gonna successfully vaccinate patients. Vaccines need to be available where patients live, through chain pharmacies, dialysis facilities, CKD and transplant clinics, and community centers. Documentation of the eligibility for vaccination and documentation of that vaccination is critically important. Should kidney patients be considered immunosuppressed? We know that their responses to vaccines are less vigorous than the general population, and that's been clearly established with hepatitis B. In addition, cell-mediated cell immune responses are weaker among patients with advanced kidney disease than they are in the general population, and obviously patients with kidney transplants are immune-suppressed in order to prevent rejection. 
In addition, it's important that registries be easily accessible to both patients and providers. The impact of the public health emergency is yet to be fully determined. Vaccines will no longer be available to dialysis facilities through the federal distribution that was established. However, dialysis providers may be able to purchase vaccines, but there's question about reimbursement, partly because of how the vaccines are supplied. As we all know, the mRNA vaccines require cold storage, which is not available in all dialysis facilities. In, addi in addition, each vial contains six vaccine doses and must be used within hours of opening, which means there's likely to be some waste unless those vaccines can be repackaged to single doses. That, how will that waste be billed and handled? In addition, again, it remains unclear about recommendations for kidney patients. It's critically important that ACIP and CDC clarify recommendations for specific populations, including kidney patients. There's also a question about when kidney patients and providers should receive boosters. It's also important that we think of the variant specific vaccines that are going to be available in September of 2023, not as boosters, but as specific vaccines, similar to the way that we approach influenza vaccine. Thank you for your time and attention.